Hi, welcome to Blood Testimonies. Your host, Yokanon. Thank you for checking out yet another episode. Uh, How you doing? Someone said they needed to see my face. Here's my face. There's my face. Got to pray for me. I've done a, a couple episodes on titled Focus. This one I want to title Creating Focus. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to take a look at the, uh, we'll, we'll title this the Origin Heart Condition. Not the organ, and it is an organ, but the Origin Heart Condition. And how it's in each and every one of us. And what to do about it. This is all from my own personal experience, strength, and hope. You don't have to agree with me. You don't have to like this, and that's okay. Um, it's just what light of understanding Abba has given to me so far on my faith walk at uh, 50 years old. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting up there. Oh, my goodness. I've already had a hemorrhoid operation, and that was like 10 years ago. I'm way too young for this nonsense. TMI, TMI, Hilton. So if you've watched my other episodes, I do like to go through a lot of scriptures. So if you want to get your notebook and something wrong with, and let's have some fun and take a journey and uh, be a Berean, like in the book of Acts, you know, they went and tested to see if what Paul was saying was true or if he was full of it by what was written. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I've had other great uh, teachers that uh, I love their quote is, you know, don't believe everything I say, verify what I say. Um, with that said, some people, um, I believe, are confused about who I am. Um, I've had some interesting comments and, uh, and questionable uh, questions, but anywho, so my legal name is Sean. I have let the old man die, the old actor, comics, blah, 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 movie maker, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and Yokanon has been resurrected into new life that is doing this until I can no longer do it anymore. Yes, back with a lot of scriptures. So, uh, the heart condition. Yes, we're going to talk about Lucifer's heart, the evil heart. We're going to be talking about that in scriptures and what it's done and its purpose and its passion and its drive against the creator through us. Seek, kill, steal, and destroy, right? All right, so we're going to start out here in Ezekiel 32, 18 through 30, and uh, you're going to see some highlighted um, parts here as we go along. And these are the focus on the attributes of the evil heart if it's not treated. And we'll talk about that later. Okay. Son of man, wail over the multitude of Mitzrayim, Egypt, and cast them down to the depths of the earth, her and her daughters of the famous nations, with those who go down to the pit. Whom do you say surpass in beauty? Hold on. Surpass in beauty. Let's go to Ezekiel 28, verse 1 and, uh, and verse 17. I don't know why I said verse 1, but verse 17. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. Traded in warped wisdom of what he thinks himself as beautiful. I know it's tough being the beautiful people, but you got to be humble. you got to be humble. I'm just saying. What? He thought I forgot about you. You're beautiful too. So are you. You're beautiful. We're all pretty people. Okay. Love one another and get along. Dang it. 
Yeah, if anybody's watched any of my other videos, you know this is my process. I go left, I go right, I go... And enjoy the journey with me. Thanks for your patience. Back to what I was saying. Yes, the... The origin of this heart condition. There is being... Lifted up with pride, with self-beauty and wisdom. Let's continue on. They shall fall in the midst of those slain by the sword. She is delivered to the sword, drawing her and all her multitudes. The strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell with those who helped him. They've gone down. They lie with the uncircumcised. Excuse me, the uncircumcised slain by the sword. And for those who don't know what that means, the uncircumcised, that means not in covenant with the creator of heaven and earth. Assyria is there in all her company, with their graves all among her, all of them slain, fallen by the sword. Her graves are set in the recesses of the pit, and her company is all around her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, who caused terror in the land of the living. First witness, terror in the land of the living. There is Elam and all her multitudes, and all around her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, who have gone down, un, down uncircumcised to the lower parts of the earth, who caused their terror in the land of the living. Second witness. Now they bear their shame with those who go down to the pit. I don't know about you, if I've, when I've gotten really enraged and upset and acted like the fool because of it, shame always followed. Interesting, uh, scripture tells us the same thing here. Anyways, uh, those who go down to the Memphis, okay, uh, verse 26. There are uh, a couple of names here I can't pronounce. With all their multitudes, with all their graves around it, all of them circumcised, slain by the sword, and they caused their terror in the land of the living. They do not lie with the mighty who are fallen of the uncircumcised who have gone down to hell and their weapons of war they have laid their swords upon the heads and their iniquity will be upon their bones because of the terror of the mighty in the land of the living <sighs> yes you shall be broken in the midst of the uncircumcised and lie in those slain by the sword there is Edom her kings and all her princes, who despite their might uh, are laid beside those slain by the sword, they shall lie with the uncircumcised and they, those who go down to the pit. Verse 30, they are the princes of the north, all of them, all of the Saddam's, yeah, that word, all of those who've gone down is slain in shame at the terror which they cause by their might. Shame, there it is again. And again, causing terror. They lie the uncircumcised with those slain by the sword and bear their shame with those who go down to the pit. Jeremiah 49.16 The horror you inspire has deceived you. The pride of your heart you shall, or you who dwell in the cliff of the rock, who hold the heights of the hills, to the, uh, that you, those who, you, good Lord, I can't speak tonight. That happens sometimes. I need water. Hello. <laughs> Sold in America. Psalms 10 and 4. The wicked is proud. In his proud conscience does not seek God. All his thoughts are, there is no. God. This heart condition, we're, we're seeing a pattern of what it looks like and how it behaves. The root cause, the root origin of this thing 
and I'm bringing a highlight to this again from a bit of awareness that Abba has given to me of of how to minister with people. But anyway, that's another another taping. Well, we already did that, the Bulls of Bashan. But any who's, yeah, uh, I'm seeing that people are getting hung up on acts and what things are being done on the outer. You know, uh, if it be with sexual immorality or whatever flavor you want to put to it. Versus the heart condition behind what drives the disobedience. The love of the Father is not there. Let's help each other see the reason why we need the love of the Father. When there's a love relationship, there's a love response to what's going on here, to what's written. Absolutely. Continue on, Hilton. Psalms 31, 18. Let the lying lips be put to silence. Shush! You know what? I don't know how many times a day I got to do that, man. I'd be walking along, dun, 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 mind my own business, and then out of nowhere. And I'm like trying to get into prayer. Shush! Oosh. Gotta love that movie though. That's fun. If you're having a hard time thinking of anything to change your state, that's a good one to do too. Dun, 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 Afro. Okay. Here we go. Psalms 31 18. With lying lips be put to silence, which speaks insolent things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. Psalm 73, 6. Therefore, pride serves as their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Proverbs 8, 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogance, and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Thus saith the Lord. Proverbs 11 and 2. When pride comes, then comes shame. There it is, another witness, but with the humble is wisdom. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 21, 24. A proud and haughty man, scoffer is his name. That's his reputation. He acts with arrogant pride. Isaiah 2.11, the lofty looks of a man shall be humbled, a haughtiness of a man shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Isaiah 2.17, the loftiness of a man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of a man shall be brought low. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day. Isaiah 9.9, 9, all the people will know Ephraim, and the inhabitants of Samaria, who says, in pride and arrogance of heart. Isaiah 16, 6. We have heard of the pride of Moab. He is very proud of his hidingness and his pride and his wrath. But his lies shall not be so. Jeremiah, 40, Jeremiah 48, 29. We have heard of the pride of Moab. He is exceedingly proud of his loftiness and arrogance of pride and of his haughtiness of his heart. Good. Three, I didn't say that right. The pride of your heart has deceived you. You who dwell in the cliffs of the rocks, who inhabits is high, you who say in your heart, who will bring me down? to the ground. You can't bring me down. Bring me down. Sorry. That happens from time to time. But uh, the Lord will bring you down. So calm down there. Uh, 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 suicidal tendencies. Calm down there, sir. Uh, uh, get the, out of here. You don't belong here. Out of my head. 
This is not rock and roll time. This is Bible study time. What's wrong with you? You gotta talk to yourself this way sometimes. Moving on, Zachariah two. All right, did I say that one? Yes, I did. Okay, so Zach, uh, Zeph Zach Zephadiah two two ten two ten. All right, this this they shall have for their pride because they have reapproached and made arrogant threats against the people of the Lord of Hosts. Yeshua touches on this in Mark seven twenty one through twenty three. For within him, out of the heart of man, proceeds evil thoughts. There's some of the adverse reactions like adultery, fornication, murder, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. 1 John 2.16 For all of this in the world, the lust of the eye, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Romans 2, 21 and 22. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. Knew were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and foolish in their hearts. It was darkened. Professing to be wise. Isn't that wise again? They became fools. <sighs> Here's the original origin of this heart source. It's Isaiah 14, 12 through 16. O Lucifer, you have fallen from heaven. O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you have been cut down to the ground. You have weakened the nations. For you had said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I also will sit on the mount of the congregations on the far side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet you will be brought down to Sha'ol, to the lowest parts of the pit. You who see and will gaze upon him and consider saying, This is the one who trembled and shook the kingdoms. Man, he's like this gorilla. You see, I'm the only true silverback gorilla up in this park, man. Y'all just some soft brown gorillas, man. Look at the, look at these soft arms, man. You see these brolic arms, man. Back up off me, man. Back you up. know what it is. You see, see, I'm the only gorilla with an emote. See, see, I'm the only gorilla up in there that look like he can play in the NFL on any given team on any given Sunday. Me. You see, see, I'm the only one that can play with this robe and look brolic while doing it. Get your soft body the hell up out of here, man. I said what I said. You heard me. Back up. See, I'm the one that can stress in his teeth while simultaneously bathing with his own homemade organic botanical soaps. And then I go lay out in the sun dramatically for the organic dry off. Me. You see, see, I'm the one that told your ass to stay off these robes. Oh, you more formidable than I thought. See, see, I'm the one that's going to be the bigger man in retreat. And I'm going to just stand here and reflect and plot my revenge. Me. See, I'm the only songwriting silverback. Look at who you came to see. I wrote that song. Tony Breaker ain't write nothing. He know what it is. You see, my name is Gerald, and I'm the one y'all sitting here looking at. Me, only I. <laughs> Stupid. I'm not the only one that's uh, heard of this. You know, Lord knows my heart. Bless his heart. Um, and I was kind of taken back uh, when... I was given this scripture, Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is a deceitful above all and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Wow, well, thanks God for giving me that. Well, yeah, we were going to talk about that, though. There's there's hope. There's healing. There's ooh, a new heart. There's a new heart, precious. We're going to talk about it. For a good reason, too. For a good reason. I'm tight. He's equal 28, 14 through 19. You were an anointed cherub who covered. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created. Father has this. Mm, there's this special cherub angel, but until iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your treading, you became filled with violence within you and sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. 
and I destroyed you, O cover, covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for your sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you to before kings that they might gaze at you. This cherub angel, this lifted up heart, this filled with violence and iniquity, all of this just in the heart of man. You know, a, in the book of uh, John, uh, I believe a blind man was brought before the Pharisees and they were asked who did this and and uh, Pharisee yells at me, you were born in sin and shaped into iniquity. Well, that makes sense since we've been born in the realm of the enemy. This is his kingdom. This is his world. Even he tried to offer it to uh, Yeshua out in the desert. Why am I bringing up all these scriptures about the heart condition and the origin of it? And what does it have to do with you and I? After all, you're perfect. I get it. You sticking with that? Just kidding. Yeshua told us about taking the log out of our own eye before we try to help each other out. And I challenge the, to consider that he was talking about the spiritual log in our eyes first. Uh, definitely the spiritual log. I think that's a given to understand. And I do my best to force this channel about experience, strength, and hope. And not me coming at y'all saying, thus saith the Lord and do it this way. But I will share what the scriptures are revealing to me. And there it goes. Psalms 82 verses 1 through 8 has rocked me. It has fine-tuned blood testimonies, purpose, drive, and passion. I'm going to read it here and I've... We've read it in other episodes, but it is something that Abba just spoke to me personally. It was like, I, I'm standing there, and it says that Abba is, is standing in the congregation of the mighty, and he judges among the gods. I can, like, maybe in the far corner over here in the heavenly courts, watching what's happening. And Abba is talking to him, to the fallen watchers. The ones that he sent down to help protect us and guide us and teach us, especially with Lucifer ramming, ramming, running to and fro among the earth. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? I mean, the backdoor handshakes, the the underhanded deals for self gain at all costs, kind of attitude, and get defending the poor and the fatherless. There in verse three. It was like, I'm hearing him. He's chastising. He's mad. What does he want the heart to do? Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. Free them from the hands of the wicked. They do not know, nor they do they understand. Oh, guys, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. They walk about in darkness, all the foundations of the earth are unstable. The purpose, reason, and passion for all these dark attributes, they're like AI programmed to send as many, as, as many intrusive thoughts as possible, trying to like, 
like a barrage of bullets and rockets coming in at you, trying to see what's going to hit and cause much destruction. Can the attribute cause guilt, condemnation, shame, pride, a lifted up heart where it doesn't care about defending the poor, the fatherless. It doesn't care about the afflicted. It doesn't care about the needy. Me. I will ascend. I will be like, I will get this. I will achieve that. It, all of that more important than helping what he has commanded he, his heavenly host to do. If they're not going to do it, here am I. Send me. This is this is it. This is where I've got to abide. He's so mad at them, and we know what he's going to do to them. He is going to, oh my goodness. They're going to be burnt up with the chaff. Anyone who abides in, in those attributes, run, repent, let it go. Run from it. The one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that spirit can help change us. If you are struggling with anger, with things that cause guilt, condemnation, or shame, anything that is just... You, you can't quite get a breakthrough. You were under spiritual attack. We got to test the spirits that we're dealing with ourselves. That, that spiritual log I was referring to. Consider that each mood that we're going through as a spirit. A spiritual attack. One way or another. It could be from Abba or the enemy. Or... Auto, auto programming on autopilot from our environment. That's why it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. I'm just stop right there because there's been a lot of attacks about false prophets, and I'm not here to do that. I am a big, big... Hi. 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 Abba wants the kids to get along and play nice with each other. He wants us to play nice with each other, guys. He's kind of upset with us. We've been bickering and fighting with one another and, and being distracted from Psalms 82. He's mad. He is. Just saying. I like what this rabbi says about the spirits. Just another witness. Demons are any force stronger than you that is negative. So if you're overcome with anger, for example, that's a demon. If you're overcome with jealousy, that's a demon. If you're overcome with kindness, that's an angel. So there are forces bigger than ourselves that we sometimes become victim to. So in that sense, yeah, you can be demonic if you allow yourself to be overcome by more anger than your system can handle. So if you're moderately, reasonably angry, that's your personality. But when you get overwhelmed by it, you know, who, who, who just took over? Who's in charge now? There's another witness with this young man. Check this out. If you get real blasphemy thoughts in your head, real demonic, evil, uh, just nasty thought in your head, remember, that's not you. It's an evil spirit that's putting these thoughts in your head, but it wants you to make it come out your mouth. You see what I'm saying? So you got to be able to discern the difference between your voice, God's voice, and the enemy's voice. Because remember, Something that comes out, that's what's going to cause you to sin. You see what I'm saying? And so, and, and these things don't necessarily mean coming out of your mouth. It can mean coming out from your heart. You know, in your heart, if you make up your mind about something, you you just made a covenant with that, that spirit that put that thought in your head. So, we all face this spiritual warfare, these battles in our head. So, when you hear something in your head, that's not you because you know you wouldn't think think of nothing like that you have to rebuke it you see you have to say i rebuke you satan get out of my head you see what i'm saying and you gotta you gotta focus on the positive things all right shalom 
again with the light of understanding that I've been given. According to what is written, there's this process of taking a stony heart and making it a heart of flesh for a purpose and a reason. Let's see what it says. Jeremiah 31, 33. But this is the covenant that I will give with the house of Israel after those days. Thus saith the Lord. I will put my law, in the Hebrew that is Torah, his instructions in their minds and write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Hebrews in the New Testament, Berhadashah uh, 8.10 For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Thus saith the Lord, I will put my laws, the Torah's instructions in their minds and write it on their hearts. And they will be a, be my uh, they will, la, 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 la. <laughs> wicked, 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 wicked. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Also Hebrews 10, 16. So I guess I'm what you would call a messianic Jew. I did not grow up um, in a Jewish household. Um, my family line comes from the Ostrounders that were uh, a part of World War One and World War II um, on my mom's side. Um, if you have watched my Experience, Strength, and Hope video, you'll kind of know uh, my journey and how I got to where I'm at now. Um, but I want to make it clear, absolutely clear. I, I love keeping Torah. I love keeping the Shabbat. I love looking at what the instructions, the laws, the, the Torahs are, and how it's a, a love response uh, out of obedience, not for salvation. I do not keep Torah or Shabbat or any Levitical, uh, uh, Levitic, Leviticus 11 dietary uh, Torah's instructions for salvation. I do not do it for salvation. I am saved by grace, grace alone, period. No works, no works. My experience where I grab my strength is from obedience out of a love response to doing these things. I am a big advocate as finding common ground with one another. We both love the Messiah. Yes, we agree with that. Yes, yes, yes. We believe through faith and trust that we are covered under the blood of Yeshua and that death is now blocked. The law of sin and death is now over. The Torah, for that any of them were broken, that involved death. The Messiah took that and also rose again. I know that. This is just relationship uh, responses. Deuteronomy 6, 24 says, And the Lord commanded us to observe all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. For me, knowing the Torah is putting on the full armor of God. It teaches me clearly the difference between all the other Elohim and the spirits versus his spirit. It's like if you were working uh, for the feds and your job was to know you're a counterfeit bill expert. How do they know the difference between a counterfeit and what's real? They study the original backwards, forwards, sideways, all around, everywhere you can imagine. So when a counterfeit comes along, it's like touch the paper. Nope, that's not real. I can see the paper. It's not real. I can, I can look at the ink. It's not real. That way you know by testing the spirit. So when you look at what's written and you know what the Torahs are and the instructions are for you, you know, there's a lot of Torahs and laws in the Old Testament, it's not, that don't apply with us. you got to be in the land. You, there's got to be a temple. There's got to be a Levitical priesthood and, and, and all different types of things for things to be carried out. Thou shalt not murder. That's a Torah. That's not done away with. That's a really good one. Don't murder. Don't have 
murderous thoughts that built up to acting out when you're killing somebody. Nish gish, not good. No, it's not good. It's not good. The Yokanai does not do Torah for salvation, but does want to find common ground with everybody, regardless of where they're at in their faith walk. I want to shine the light of the love of the Messiah, of how it's came to you and how it's pierced your heart and has been putting his love and affecting you this far in your journey and magnify that his spirit is a promise it's it's not an if it's not you know i hope you get it no it's a promise it's a gift and there's nothing you have to do for it nothing period nothing the evidence is the fruit of obedience of what it said it will do it will put his torah in your mind you'll want to do it it will cause and drive you. It will be on your heart. It will be on your thoughts. How can I please you, Lord? What's the fear of the Lord? It is a fountain of life that one may avoid the snares of death. It is wisdom. It is knowledge. It's understanding of the Creator. It's a fountain of life. And those all who have it have great understanding. So all that to say this and everything we've gone through is that I just recently went full board uh with the ministry on TikTok and I'm looking for anybody and everybody that will have a relationship with me on TikTok and share their faith with me and, and edify one another, uplift one another, encourage one another. We need it not to tear one another apart. I, I, I've been feeling this in my heart here. I've seen just a, so much division guys it's breaking my heart watching you guys what's happening this guy there's only one guy there's the trinity you're not keeping shabbat you're not keeping sabbath you've got the wrong uh date and and, and you're not keeping the right calendar all these things and divisions it's like hold on the enemy is doing a really good job man i feel like paul that's right here in verse 10 here in first corinthians now i plead with you brethren by the name of yeshua hamashiach jesus christ that you all speak the same thing that there be no divisions among you but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind guys We've got to find what we have in common. There are people that I minister to that don't want to have nothing to do with church. I, I mean, I, I posted, uh, you know, and we have a problem, some examples of why people aren't going to church. But, I mean, other than people who have been hurt by church, uh, they see us fighting and not united. What's attractive about that? I've had that when I had walked away and was mad at God and everybody that had to do with them. I was like, yeah, because of these issues, everybody's divided about and pointing a finger at each other. If you don't believe what we're believing, you're lost. You don't do this this way. You're not truly saved. You don't have the truth. I mean, I get it that we all want to make sure we're guarded and not getting astray or someone else that we love getting astray and because there are, I get it, there are wolves. I get it. But I like to hallucinate that not all of you are wolves. <laughs> I want to help force our focus on, on loving one another. As we are loving him with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our heart, again, his heart, aligned with his will, his purposes, his instructions. So that it will keep us alive and protected for our good always. Making sure that we personally abide in that. And in that process, striving for maturity, love one another. Put down our expectations and grab a hold of appreciation of everyone you come in contact with. And man, I guarantee you everything changes. don't have to agree with everything. You don't have to be so right. You're out of a relationship with everybody. As my grandma would say, don't be so heavenly minded. You're no earthly good. There's some pros and cons of that statement. 
I mean, I want to be so heavenly minded. I am effective on this earth, but not where I'm like so heavenly minded and so holy. I can't, everything's pagan. Oh my gosh, help me. Yes, we're in the world. We're not of the world, but we're still in it. And we got the great commission still to do, guys. And we got to pull together and help each other because as I shared in my experience, Strength and Hope, I was addicted to porn. And it's not that God just delivered me. He's helped me staying delivered on a daily basis, creating focus, staying focused, and helping by doing this channel, helping me remain abided in the bind, i.e. focused on him and what's written and doing what he said to do. There's so many people suffering guys out there. Here in Sonoma County where I live, they uh, have shut down uh, a lot of the mental institutions. Uh, funding has gone and they're on the streets with the demons that are just haunting them and they can't break loose from them. They've got them so bound. I mean, I can see the, the, the spirits just circling their minds, just and, and them reacting out of emotions out of them and feeling guilt, condemnation, and shame because they messed up one more time and they can't do this, they can't do that, they can't overcome this. The body of Messiah needs to rise above our differences and be like in an emergency hospital that goes out. Psalms 82, how long will we not do justice? Defend the fatherless, defend the poor and the needy, help them, not just with materialistic things and food, but their spirit, their mind, and just all I'm doing is just, hey, there's Abba, there's his word, focus, this is way walk in it, and you will live and you will have peace and freedom when you remain and abide in it as a primary focus. It's not hard. His commandments are not hard, period. Remember here in 1 John chapter 3, verse 11, for this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that you should love one another. As written in Deuteronomy 10, 15 through 19, and Leviticus 19, 15 through 18. And then the Gospel of John 15, 10, 15, 10, verse 22 here through 24. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Yeshua HaMashiach and love one another as he gave us commandment. Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. That's that Jeremiah 31, 1 John 5, 2 and 3. By this we know that we love the children of God that we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. If there's a trigger in you right now, or a voice that has come in, what? Under the law. False doctrine. Any of that stuff. Please pause. Slow to anger. Slow to wrath. The scriptures are here for a reason and a purpose. They do go like this, I promise, for a purpose so that we can fulfill Psalms 82. We can test the spirits, know what spirit we're of. We've done our own spiritual surgery, taking the spiritual log out, and we can see the hurt, the suffering, and what the principalities are who are seeking out to kill and destroy. We'll be able to see them clearly, how they're doing it in our own lives, our family, and our community. 
It's time to rise up. It's time to rise up. Rise people, put on your strength. There's a war going on, and when, when, when. That's enough, Hilton. Sorry. Reeled in, reeled in. Leave in the comments what we have in common. No negativity, please. No attacking one another. We don't need to. What's wrong is always available, but so what is right? What do we have in common? I always do my best to make myself reachable through text, email, uh, if I'm available for a phone conversation, Zoom. I want to magnify Psalm 82 being fulfilled. I want Abba to say, well done and faithful servant. Well done and faithful servant. You saw the ones that were suffering and you went after them. You heard me. You, you heard me. You saw the suffering. You saw the pain. You saw the mental disabilities that the enemy was attacking and, and making them. Making them to the point of suicide. And a lot of them did take their lives this year. So many. Because they couldn't break the demons from their head. Where are my children going out there to break it? Where are they? <laughs> are they still bickering and fighting over things that really don't matter? Did not naming just grab a bunch of dirt and put it on a donkey? Did not the prophet say you're good? <laughs> Did not the thief on the cross or the murder what debatable? Was it not said and written today you'll be in paradise with me? There was no doctors or traditions, it was baptism, speaking in tongues, confession of one God, three God, none of that mattered. The way to your matter, guys, it's the way to your matters. But yet I know the darkness will creep in and distort somehow this whole message and For those who heard me and and felt me in this message, how can I support you? How can we support each other to get this mission done in our areas? I don't want to hide my talents and be called a wicked servant. I don't have much. I have a few cameras, these cell phones. <sighs> And a heart to to change hearts to his that was promised it needs to be awakened in each one of us and magnified and focused on. Thank you for letting me get all vulnerable with you on this episode of Blood Testimonies. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.